my dear esteemed colleagues and very dear friends um, uh, my dear dr rajiv and salini i'm going to speak today on a very important contemporary issue does type 2 diabetes originate from liver <clears throat> it's it's a type of provocative subject centered around the diabetes and liver in a vicious relationship uh, dear friends i would like to say that uh, i have a small agenda for you we'll introduce the topic think of the nafld and type 2 diabetes mellitus we'll pass on to alcoholic fatty liver disease and type 2 diabetes mellitus we'll discuss how both these produce type 2 diabetes de novo <clears throat> hepatitis c virus how does it produce diabetes itself and during its treatment what happens most important liver cirrhosis and the hepatogenous diabetes which has become a big issue testifying that diabetes originates in the cirrhotic liver <clears throat> we'll discuss about the diabetes treatment algorithm in cld and uh, we'll discuss the intricate relationship between the type 2 diabetes and the liver disease and we'll go into four summary points dear friends suffice it to mention the prevalence of type 2 diabetes mellitus is higher who have liver disease such as nfld alcoholic liver disease chronic viral hepatitis or cirrhosis there is a pathogenic link between the liver disease progression and type 2 diabetes mellitus pathway leading from fatty liver to type 2 diabetes and back dear friends this cartoon is very important which shows that you know which shows very significantly that the 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 liver is the storehouse for glucose and prepares glycogen and and, and you know liver plays an important role in storing glucose uh, from the from the blood and also manufacturing glycogen now high blood glucose promotes insulin release from the pancreas giving rise to glucose uptake which can lower the blood glucose it can stimulate insulin can stimulate glycogen formation and also raise in the rise in the blood glucose now it is very important to know that the liver glucose metabolism is centered around three things number 1 liver stores glucose in the form of glycogen and utilizes in the same way when body requires the glucose very this cartoon shows the various pathways from the hexamine pathway to pentose pathway how liver utilizes the glucose we'll pass pass on the most important topic how nephil produces type 2 diabetes mellitus dear friend obesity can act in three ways to produce diabetes so one of the ways is type is the liver liver has got increased lipid content in obesity steatosis copper cell activation and er stress similarly skeletal muscle also has increased ffa uptake increased uh, macrophage activation and er stress and all this produce ir ir in the skeletal muscle ir in the liver and nonetheless in the adipose tissue there is adipocyte hypertrophy macrophage recruitment and er stress increased lipolysis so obesity leads to increase liver increase lipid on the liver that subsequently leads to in, insulin resistance and this systemic insulin resistance and inflammation gives rise to diabetes mellitus i'll be little fast to complete the whole topic i must mention here that nephil contributes to the development of type 2 diabetes development type 2 diabetes as i show in the cartoon by increasing glucose production in the liver and exacerbating the hepatic insulin resistance through activation of hepatic protein kinase c and some liver secreted protein i'll come in a minute which have got diabetogenic properties like fetuin a which i'm not going to speak after me fetuin b uh, retinal binding protein 4 selenium protein and dpp4 and herpep 1 dear friends the increased glucose production in the nephil gives rise to the diabetes mellitus and you know there are many 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 meta analysis i have just brought three for you this meta analysis shows that the non alcoholic fatty liver disease is as a great risk of incidence type 2 diabetes development it has the study of about 27 studies there is a new one which also shows that uh, that that the patients with more severe nephil were also more likely to develop incident diabetes this risk increases across the ultrasonographic scores of steatosis but it appeared to be even greater among the patients who have nephil and the in the and those who have nephil 
fibrosis score. They didn't have diabetes before, but they developed diabetes. So diabetes baffled is very significantly associated with a twofold increased risk of incident diabetes. Dear friends, I like to add that no hepatokines are released by the fatty liver, and uh, there are many. I'll just address two: uh, fetuin A, FGF21, folistatin, HGF, and you see they have a lot of function on the on the on the pancreatic islets. They can improve beta cell proliferation, improve GSIS. They can decrease the beta cells, can produce apoptosis, and, and decreases the uh, GSIS. And you know they produce a lot of alteration in the glucose metabolism. This cartoon shows that, uh, that in conditions of nutritional excess, the diabetes is produced and they can generate increased hepatokines and the, as, as shown in the red boxes, and they can produce diabetes mellitus. In addition, there is a increase in other hepatokines, which are shown in the blue box, that trigger compensatory mechanism of increased beta cell proliferation. So, and in contrast, there's a decrease in the release of the other hepatokines that produce increase in beta cell proliferation. To make a long story short, the hepatokines and the liver factors involves in the talk with the hepatic tissue and the pancreatic beta cells giving rise to diabetes mellitus. Now, there is a factor called PANDER. PANDER stands for pancreatic derived factor, PANDER. Now, in the presence of nutrients, PANDER is co-secreted with insulin and acts to regulate insulin release. When IR is present, beta cells increase insulin and pander release. In this situation, the increase in pander induces beta cell apoptosis, decrease in GSIS, giving rise to type 2 diabetes mellitus. Dear friends, I will not address this, but I'll go to the text which can which can really tell you how pancreatic beta cell dysfunction is associated with Nuffield. Dear friends, now, there's a disposition index, which is employed to assess the pancreatic beta cell function. And, and, and you know, this study, which I'm described, had about 6,138 patients. Now, the NAPHELD patients had much higher HOMA 2, and also the NAPHELD participants had 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 lot of increased insulin resistance, which was known by the DI index. So, some cases the di index were much lower in nephil patients and and the and the analysis showed that di was inversely associated with the nephil prevalence if the di levels are low there is increased nephil prevalence and therefore it is clear that di or disposition index to to assess pancreatic cell function is has a great deal of association with nephil. I think that is the only take home message that the lower the DI disposition index, the more the nephil, the relationship liver and diabetes mellitus. Therefore, the pancreatic beta cell function will be a new predictor for the presence of nephil. You are this beta cell function, you can predict whether the present going to develop nephil or not. An insufficient compensatory beta cell function is associated with nephil. Now, coming to alcoholic fatty liver disease, heavy alcohol consumption in the people who already have fatty liver disease is a greater risk of developing type 2 diabetes. A moderate alcohol consumption without FLD also can produce diabetes. Compared to none or minimal alcohol intake can produce no FLD. Therefore, uh, the, no, cannot produce type 2 diabetes. So therefore, heavy and moderate alcohol consumption with or without fatty liver disease can, can, can produce type 2 diabetes mellitus, incident type diabetes mellitus. Even moderate alcohol consumption can produce incident type 2 diabetes mellitus without fatty liver disease. In contradistinction, when there is no alcohol intake or minimal alcohol intake, there is, with or without FLD, there is no production of type 2 diabetes. Now, the alcohol insulin signaling is, product, is, is depicted here. Hepatic glucose, hepatic insulin signaling includes fat production, glycogen production, and the stopping of the gluconeogenesis. And alcohol, the insulin signaling, it produces increased fat production, more of gluconeogenesis, and less of glycogenolysis. Now, so there is a great deal of insulin resistance in the alcoholic liver disease. Now, this cartoon shows the liver steatosis is associated with increased production of insulin 
from the beta cells in order to compensate for the whole body insulin resistance. Now, this is associated with the greater insulin secretion, and the model parameter suggests relative beta cell dysfunction with NAFIL in apparently healthy older adults, which may be occur to reduce and produce diabetes mellitus. Coming to hep C and virus infection, now it has been shown that uh, SCV infection is associated with an increased risk of development of type 2 diabetes mellitus. T2DM is more common among patients with chronic SCV than in patients with other liver disease or in general population. Now, if you look at the look at the treatment paradigm, those who have sustained virological response, good response in hepatitis C virus, it has been shown that the HOMA scores come down sub-significantly. In contradistinction, it has been also shown that when the, 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 the sustained uh, viral response is there, that means the HIPC is coming down, there's a reduction in the HOMA R, HOMA IR showing that diabetes does not occur. So therefore, SCB has a great, great bearing on the, on the production of diabetes mellitus, and there's a good biological clearing, the type 2 diabetes may not occur. Now, it has been shown here that, that, that if you look at the increase in resistance in the hepatitis C infection, one finds that the IR is associated with the altered hepatic function testing. Now, liver cirrhosis is a great example of insulin resistance and beta cell dysfunction. And both together can give rise to hypertrophic diabetes. The pathway cycle of normal glucose tolerance, impaired glucose tolerance, and full-blown diabetes mellitus. And, you know, a state of impaired glucose regulation caused by loss of liver function as a consequence of cirrhosis is the, is the pathway to produce type 2 diabetes. Now, the pathophysiology of hypertrophic diabetes in the liver is depicted here. I'll not go into details. But if you compare the hypertrophic diabetes with ordinary garden variety type 2 diabetes mellitus, the diabetes in hypertrophic one is after cirrhosis onset. Type 2 diabetes mellitus, garden variety before cirrhosis onset. Hypertrophic has normal fasting plasma glucose, HV1C. It has increased fasting plasma glucose, HV1C, type 2 diabetes garden variety. Metabolic risk factors less frequent, more frequent. Vascular complications less frequent, more frequent. Liver complications is more frequent hypertrophic as expected. Less frequent type 2 diabetes mellitus. Effect of, 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 of giving orthotropic liver transplantation. Diabetes reverses totally. 26 cases of transplant has been described in from India, which are reverse diabetes. But 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 you know, there is no modification in the transplant. In the mortality, more than non-diabetics in hypertrophic and more than non-diabetics in either way. Dear friends, I must also hasten to add that uh, there, there, if you look at the reported prevalence of hypertrophic diabetes in patients with liver cirrhosis, you will find that it varies from 13%. I mean, you know, large to 86.7%. So hypertrophic diabetes in cirrhosis is very common. And, and you see the percentage is shown in this cartoon. It is quite common. Now, prevalence of abnormalities of glucose regulation among special cirrhosis has been observed in, 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 in a, if you look at the aggregated glucose ratio, you find it is altered up to 87% in hypertrophic diabetes, giving rise to the fact that it is a it is a, it is a function of the cirrhosis to give rise to uh, to type two diabetes. Now, if you look at the severity of the liver cirrhosis from child A, uh, child child A to child B and child C, you will find that as the as the the higher prevalence noted with more severe liver disease. Now, this is figure A, this is figure A, B. Figure A shows rising prevalence of IgT and diabetes mellitus as the, the 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 cirrhosis orsens from A to C and figure B shows rising prevalence of IGT and DM as the male scores rises. So there's a good relation between them. You know the liver function, simply the liver enzymes like the serum alkaline phosphatase, like the aspartate amino transferase, it has been told many times, can give an indication of type 2 diabetes mellitus, mean activity of the ALT, AST, and alphas of diabetic patients so difference from the other 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 population there'll be no time to describe in detail treatment algorithm i must show that, the, that there is a great deal of treatment algorithm that exists for treating diabetes in the in these people i'll just allude to three uh, three three slides which shows about the various treatment that we have like metformin 
bioglitazone and alpha blue inhibitor if you find that if you give metformin i'm just giving the pros and cons it favors safety profile cardioprotective improve insulin resistance amino transferase transferase is is increased liver morphology is improved now reduces scc risk by 50 to 70 percent and reduces the risk of hepatic encephalopathy by eightfold pyoglutage is a wonderful drug for the nephil it improves the amino transferase and liver histology low risk of hypoglycemia inhibits scc development experimental model alpha glucose inhibitors also reduces the the postprandial glucose and glycemic variation now if you go to the other slide it shows the uh, the effect of the sulfurous magnetite and insulin has been shown to effectively glycemic control safe safe to use and no risk of hypoglycemia now now the, the characteristics of the oral hypoglycemic patients related to the cirrhosis patient where to use where not to use i i like to draw this to your attention to this that uh, these drugs some of the drugs are clinical experience in cirrhotic patients and uh, the risk of lactic acidosis etc has been described in them now there is pharmacological uh, favorable pharmacological properties in cirrhosis patients and the clinical experience is limited with the drug DPP-4, AGI, and SGLT2 inhibitors. Now, if you look at the, at the factors that might influence selection of anti-diabetic drugs, it can be obesity, it can be sarcopenia, it can be hyperammonemia, it can be renal impairment, hypoglycemia. You want to you have to find a drug depending on that. Uh, now, the other thing I'd like to discuss quickly before I close, there's the effect of the SGLT2 inhibitor in the DAFL. Today, we have a lot of studies which have shown that SGLT2 inhibitors can reduce hepatic steatosis more than expected, can produce weight loss, uh, additional weight independent mechanism. So it's a wonderful drug for the NAFL. It's used in diabetes and takes care of uh, the, the, the NAFL in type 2 diabetes mellitus. And, and, and a randomized placebo control trial examining the effect of the various anti-diabetic drugs for the treatment of nafil defected here, you will find the drugs which holds promise that we use today, pyoglitazone, GLP-1 RAs, D4 inhibitors, and SGL2 inhibitors. They are the four drugs which holds promise for use in nafil anti-diabetic drugs being used in nafil Now, if you look at the uh, intricate relationship between type 2 diabetes and liver disease, I have a very important cartoon. You know, diabetes promotes the risk of steatohepatitis, risk of cirrhosis, risk of hepatosolar cancer. And the NAFIL promotes worsening the insulin resistance, risk of the atherogenic dyslipidemia, risk of type 2 diabetes mellitus, increased difficult to manage, and the risk of cardiovascular disease. So that is the relationship between type 2 diabetes and NAFIL. Now this cartoon shows that the how the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and type 2 diabetes are in a vicious relationship. Now liver disease progression can give rise to diabetes mellitus and diabetes progression can give rise to nafil and the hepatitis C virus also is, is also partially supported by type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now there is increased insulin resistance, increased pro-inflammatory cytokines, increased diaprotogenic hepatokines and reactive oxygen species in diabetes mellitus which can give rise to uh, in the liver fibrosis and can lead to SCC. I will not discuss in detail because lack of time. I'll go to the last two slides which shows that, uh, that the adipose tissue insulin resistance is a factor to produce the NAFIL or the NASH, and it, it, it produces increase in lipolysis, secretion of the pro-inflammatory cytokines, and give rise to lipotoxicity. And needless to mention, lipotoxicity and glucotoxicity can produce uh, insulin resistance. This shows the relationship between lipoglucotoxicity, resistance, and the beta cell function. So therefore, dear friends, I will conclude by saying fatty liver and diabetes both share insulin resistance and this is a great pathogenic determinant of the relationship between the type 2 diabetes and the, and, and the liver disease and the origination of the type 2 diabetes from the liver disease. The prevalence of type 2 diabetes is high who have liver disease. At least four are identified. Nafil, also some chronic viral hepatitis, hemochromatosis, alcohol liver disease, and cirrhosis. So these liver disease, nafil, chronic viral hepatitis, hemochromatosis, alcohol liver disease, and cirrhosis, they are the ones which can promote, they can produce type 2 diabetes mellitus by the various mechanisms I've just described. There's a pathogenic link 
between the presence of type 2 diabetes and the severity of the liver injury. The more severe the liver injury, the greater is the hyperglycemia and the great severe is the pathogenic link. Now, there's a great pathway leading from fatty liver to type 2 diabetes. I have presented before the evidences. What are the pathways leading from fatty liver to type 2 diabetes? And also back from the latter to the progressive liver disease. Type 2 diabetes is a factor, progressive liver disease and the vicious cycle. Dear friends, uh, we'll listen more about this subject in times to come. But I just wanted to give a bird's eye view very quickly in about 18 minutes that how the, 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 the um, liver diseases or liver itself can be a originator of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Thank you. Thank you very much.